After you finish preparing the mud, clean the hock and prepare the stone for installation. When applying the mud onto the back of the stone, keep the edges clean and apply the mud heavier in the center of the stone. This will form a cone shape. This causes the mud to spread outward from the center so that less access gets on the side of the stone. Access will actually fall out, which is what you want to happen. When applying larger stones, you can make a groove in the mud to aid in the suction. In almost all cases, you should apply the stone from the top to the bottom. Press the stone onto the wall and shake it slightly. You can tell the stone has bonded to the wall when it no longer moves. You should scrape off the excess mud so that it doesn't bulge over the face of the stone. By starting at the top and working down, you can ensure the falling mud won't dirty the lower stones. It's important that you are conscious of stone size and color. You'll want to vary the size and color of the stones as they are placed next to each other. When the scratch coat is wet, you can still move some of the stones around, but with a dry scratch coat, this typically won't work as well. Once the wall has been filled with all the random stone you can use, start plugging the gaps. Find the smaller, longer, skinnier pieces to fill in the gaps and holes. You will need to break some stones with a rock hammer to fit them into the smaller gaps. Try to hide the broken side. You can also sand out the broken edge with the bottom of another stone so that the stone doesn't have a fractured look to it. When the wall has been completely plugged, it's necessary to take the tuck point trowel and knock out all the excess mud. This will enhance the grouting process, especially if you're not going to grout until the next day.